I was not painting uh, because I wasn't an artist in my mind, sure. and that like painting is just for artists. Um, so I would, uh, I was really into textiles. I was always doing something crafty, uh, knitting, sewing, um, weaving, just like a bunch of different stuff, uh, dyeing stuff. Um, and I always had some like little venture going on the side that was sort of like art related. Um, but I didn't start painting until um, I think I was like 39. Um, sure. I had been like making these tote bags that I uh, I would like draw a design for the front. And then I like had this like super hokey like hand like screen print method um, where I would like put this design on a on a tote bag and uh sell them for like 30 bucks cool i get little markets and stuff <laughs> yeah a little cool. markets i had like i started an etsy etsy shop um and i started an instagram account and that kind of just like snowballed and sure. um and then i just sort of like removed the tote bags from the equation and i was that, <laughs> and just started yeah, doing i just painting. started like painting and i was like it's it's okay like you can just do it Welcome back, friends. Today, I drove over to Uptown Minneapolis to sit with an artist I found on Instagram, known for her folk art, for her pop, brights of color, and simplistic designs. Welcome to the show, Becca Worley. Thanks. Thank you for having me over in the studio. You just moved here in June, you said, right? Yep, that's right. But um, you've lived in Minneapolis for a long time? Yes, I've been here uh, since I was like 18. So. Oh, okay. What'd yeah. you move to Minneapolis for? Because you're from, I guess, let's take it back. You're from um, where? Michigan somewhere? I'm from Michigan. I'm from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. What town specifically? Uh, Norway. I, don't, I guess I don't know where that <laughs> is. Is there a big art scene up in Norway? No, there was like 300 people. Oh, okay, um, cool. So yeah. how did you get introduced to art in a town that's that small? Were your parents super into it? My mom is a very creative person, um, and I was also homeschooled. So oh, cool. we just sort of had to like make our own fun. Um, yeah, as long as I can remember, I've just been like drawing. So when did yeah. you start painting, like getting into that medium? Was that pretty early as well? Um, like finger painting? <laughs> dabbling with like watercolors and stuff off and on like yeah when i was little and um i didn't start like doing what i'm doing now until like uh 2018 so oh it, sure it took me a long time <laughs> yeah what made you inspired to do art earlier on were you inspired by like cartoons and stuff in a town that size it's not like there's museums where you would go to and then get all excited about yeah, it yeah no there wasn't um i wasn't like looking at other like art by other artists i just um I don't know. It was just like w what we did. Um, sure. We like would have like all these colored pencils and me and my sister would just sit there and draw. Um, yeah. Ponies. A lot of ponies. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Which you just painted a pony recently. So you're I getting did. back that to your like roots. That was like my first as a, sure. as a grown up. When did you start taking art more seriously? Were you doing any like small art shows and stuff around when you were like middle school, high school age? Or was that something that was just like purely a hobby until way, way later on? It was purely a hobby. Uh, I kind of like I, I loved doing it, but I didn't think I was good at it. Um, I have never like been drawn to realism. And so I just thought you had to be like really good at like, I don't know, making something look exactly like what it looks like in real life um to be a good artist so yeah uh yeah i just it was just a hobby until i was like almost 40 and sure. i was like all right <laughs> what was it that like made you come to that realization that you don't have to do realism because i was in the same boat like i didn't i yeah. started painting when i was 28 yeah and it was because like i wasn't an art kid growing up i couldn't like i couldn't do a portrait i had right. no interest in doing a portrait yeah. i couldn't like look at something and then draw it and have the dimensions like line up right so i just same. thought i wasn't good at it and then i discovered an artist that his name's luca buffo but he does kind of like these colorful like characters and stuff and yeah. when I saw that, I was like, oh, I feel like I could do something kind of like that, maybe. And that's kind of like what triggered me. But what was it for you? Really similar, honestly. I um, I grew up, that was part of it. And I, sure. I kind of was like, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. You're you're a grown person. Yeah. Um, but also, like, around that time, I started getting on Instagram and just discovered a few artists that were doing... Um, kind of their own thing um yeah. and martha rich is one of them uh yeah and then i was like oh it doesn't have to look like a certain thing it can be whatever 
whatever I want it to be. So sure. Yeah. And since you didn't do that for a career, because we're talking like, obviously, we skipped like a pretty significant amount yeah. of time. here. <laughs> um, but so you can't you came to Minneapolis because of what college college? Yeah. What did you go to college for creative writing? Oh, okay. And at what point did you move away from that? Or do you still do creative writing stuff? Um, I never used that degree beyond like, I mean, I can write a really good email. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, but I never like got paid to like write. Oh, okay. Um, I had kids super young. Um, I was still in college when I had my uh, oldest son. And I just kind of like got swept up in that. And uh and then and your partner, he is a videographer, yeah. photographer, and you basically just worked with him throughout that time frame? Yeah. So, um, I mean, in college and whatever, we both just had like scrappy little jobs. And then yeah. um, he started doing photography. He was uh, like doing construction and like photography on the side. And I was just kind of like, a, I had like babies. So sure. I was pretty distracted. Um, but then when the kids started getting a little older, I was just helping him like run the business. Yeah. Um, Cause by that point he was freelance, so. Do you think you learned a lot from helping him with that business that was able to like help you when you started working for yourself as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think a big part of like being self-employed in any form is just like valuing like what you're doing and yeah. like pricing yourself correctly. Sure. Um, and so I was seeing him like ha sort of have to like fight for getting his rate or just like offering cut rates or whatever. Um, and like as his partner, I was like, no, like that's not cool. We're not gonna do that. So it was just easier when I started doing my own thing to be like, I have to value what I'm doing or nobody else will. Yeah, how do you decide like pricing though? Cause that is something that kind of, I feel like almost everybody really struggles with, right? Yeah. Because some people will value at that, right. but other people won't value your work at that. So it's hard to get what you what your value should be. I put it off till the last minute. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, and then I just sort of like have an emotional breakdown. Um, and I don't know, I kind of go by like, how did it go last time I did a release or like put work out? Um, yeah. And what were those prices like? Uh, did everything sell really fast? Um, how much do I love this piece? How much work did I put into it? It's just sort of like, um, it's very woo woo. It's not like a straightforward like yeah. system. Yeah, I think you have to be, have the humility to accept that some things won't sell for what you think they're worth sometimes. Right. You know what I mean? In mm -hmm. which case then the price just has to go lower or whatever, or yeah. you have to be willing to sit on that particular yeah. thing for the time being, you know what I mean? You can't be in that desperate uh, period. So going back and into like when you started getting into art, now that I have like kind of an idea of the story of how sure. you've gotten to that point. So your kids had gotten older and you were helping your partner with the business. Um, and then you got on Instagram and you saw some artists. So when did you like, were you not painting through that entire time years before? And then you all of a sudden had this inspiration to start painting again? Yeah. Um, I was not painting, uh, because I wasn't an artist in my mind sure. and that like painting is just for artists. Um, so I would, uh, I was really into textiles. I was always doing something crafty, uh, knitting, sewing, um, weaving, just like a bunch of different stuff, uh, dyeing stuff. Um, and I always had some like little venture going on the side that was sort of like art related. Um, but I didn't start painting until, um, I think I was like 39. Um, sure. I had been like making these tote bags that I, uh, I would like draw a design for the front. And then I like had this like super hokey, like hand, like screen print method, um, where I would like put this design on a, on a tote bag and, uh, sell them for like 30 bucks. <laughs> cool. I like get little markets and stuff. Yeah. A little cool. markets. I had like, I started an Etsy, Etsy shop. Um, and I started an Instagram account and that kind of just like, snowballed and sure. um and then i just sort of like removed the tote bags from the equation and i was that, <laughs> it's just started yeah, doing i just paint. started like painting and i was like it's it's okay like you can just do it sure so as tote bags started taking off where was that it was a screen printing like a one color screen or was it like a cricket kind of like a thing it was a screen um you basically like stretch a piece of fabric over an embroidery hoop and then yeah. like paint the negative space with glue oh cool. and then you kind of like stencil through that. How'd you learn how to do that? 
Uh, the internet. You just like Google it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I mean, you can obviously learn kind of anything on there. What made you like think to start an Etsy shop? Um, and that, how long ago was that at this point? Um, I think I started my Etsy shop in 2017 or 2018. I'm oh, okay. a little fuzzy on that, but, um, sure. uh, honestly, I was just like making this shit anyway. And, uh, we were like super broke and I was like, well, every little bit helps, you know, this yeah. isn't going to like save us, but, um, so it started as just a little side hustle. Do you think, um, because you had started by selling things on Etsy that helped you with your career as far as like making affordable art with stickers and like strategizing in that kind of way? Cause I think one thing that's tough is making enough money just from your original artwork is really difficult for it to like pay you hourly what you need to make. Absolutely. Because yeah. people like a painting can take a week, but who can afford Not very many people are trying to right. pay you a week's worth of a rate for yeah. a livable wage for a painting. Yeah. No, you know I mean? for sure. My bread and butter is stickers and prints. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think just not coming from the background of someone who could afford to buy my own art, um, especially back in the day, like uh, I think like it's really important to me to have that be accessible to people. Um, I know a lot of people aren't like super into prints, but I don't know, like art should be for everybody and yeah. um, not everyone can afford a painting. So, and I can like make a print and then, you know, yeah. it just like is like repeats itself. I don't have to like keep doing that work. Right. What was um, the first painting that you made that you made prints and stickers and stuff out of? Cause you started with the totes, but when did, how did that morph into selling paintings and, and all that. I started just like at markets or whatever, I would have like little like watercolors that I would sell alongside the totes. Um, it took me a while to start making prints. Um, I think a few years after I had kind of gotten into like um, the market scene, uh, I got an iPad and started drawing on my iPad and then there's like no way to like that, you know, you have to make that into a print. Right. Um, yeah. if, if you want anyone to like get their hands on it. So I think that's when I started doing that. And then I realized um, I had a photographer living with me. And so he sure. could uh, take pictures of my uh, like actual paintings and then turn those into prints too. Sure. What made you want to get into digital art? Because it's a totally. I personally, like I do digital art as well. Mm -hmm. um, like when you're designing a mural, it's like, oh, you kind of have yeah. to do it that way. You know what I mean? Um, but I just like the tactile feeling of actually painting. For sure. You know what I mean? Significantly more than I like doing the digital stuff. Yeah. Was it just like, a, this is something I can do while I'm at the market? Like, as you know what I mean? Or why um, did you do that? It was just, it looked like fun. Sure. I just I saw like... I, you know, I saw other people doing it, uh, and people would post like the time lapse of like the drawing that they made in Procreate or whatever. And, um, I was like, well, I want to do that. And so sure. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it at that point then that paintings, you started like shifting the focus more so just to being prints and stuff, because you're selling original artwork at that point in time, right. right. Of like yeah. little watercolors and whatnot. But, yeah. Like clearly at, if you're selling those at market, Mar like little markets you probably weren't pricing them super high no they um, were like probably like 20 bucks or something. right yeah exactly <laughs> so then was it a pretty quick transition of like realizing oh i can make these prints and now i can focus more time on each individual painting and pricing them higher or how did that go i think it was just like a slow gradual like right. you know um i was also like around that time i had started uh working part-time at a letterpress studio um and like I mean, their whole thing is prints. And so I think that was also kind of like interesting to me, even though, you know, obviously I was doing digital prints. Um, it was just like this like repeated piece of art. Um, sure. I don't know um, exactly how that transition happened. It was all just sort of like. Sure. At what point did you realize that this was going to like have the potential to be your full time kind of a career? In like. 2019 2020 like it started to like pick up a lot um i was getting like commissions people were contacting me and wanting like a painting uh which just was like mind-blowing to me like you're gonna you're gonna reach out to me yeah. and you want um, you're gonna give me money to like do this thing that i love to do anyway um and uh my instagram started like kicking off and uh I don't know, it was going really well. And I was just like putting in so much time, you know, I was working and then I was like going home and I was like working. 
Um, and I kind of like maxed out where I could get, you know, with like the time I was spending at my day job. Um, and then the pandemic happened and we were like in lockdown and I was like, uh, we might not be here next year. So sure, yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. just like see what happens. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Talked to my partner and he was like, well, why not? Like, let's just see. You yeah. can always get a job again if it doesn't work out. So, yeah, I think that's a really good point to make is that like the world's not over if it doesn't succeed. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, my, when I had quit my job to open my skateboard shop, I knew like, well, if this worst case happens, like this fails, I'll just go back to my job. Yeah. You know, and I'll have to dig myself out of a financial hole a little bit, sure. but like at, yeah. at least that's available. But another thing is like people wonder when it's time to start trying to like take it full time. I, I feel like usually the world kind of tells you in a way yeah. of like, you're just getting too busy. Yeah. If you get to a point where you're turning down all these paid opportunities, yeah. usually that's the time. And if you're not having those paid opportunities come your way it's probably not the time yeah you know like I, I mean? felt like I could envision like that I was on a trajectory and yeah. like I could see it getting bigger if I could give it more time but I just was giving it all the time that I had and so I felt sort of like I was at a plateau and it mm. was either like you can do this part-time for the rest of your life or you can see what happens did you feel like at that point you had already kind of figured out your own style and space within the art world because you definitely have like, I guess I'll let you describe what your art looks like. Cause in, in your, <laughs> your like bio and stuff it refers to as like folk art. I didn't go to any kind of art school or anything. And I draw and paint like goofy little monsters and stuff. Sure. Like that's what I do. But I don't, I don't, if I didn't see a picture and said folk art, I guess I would picture things that are like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't even picture this cause I don't know what yeah. folk art is. So, well, I also didn't go to art school. So maybe <laughs> that's the problem. Um, I guess. I feel like folk art to me is like um, kind of almost like amateur, like it's just like done for the love and it's like you see it on everything and it's like um, not not necessarily something that's like, it's like gonna be on a textile or it's gonna be on a wall or like a thing in your home. It's, it's not like um, this precious like fine art thing that's up on the wall. I guess sure. that's why I like connect to it because I feel like that describes like my yeah my outlook on it that it's like it's, it's not, not snobbish yes it's not, <laughs> it's not precious it's just I, I just like it <laughs> yeah sure and so you started is like at what point did you start doing that was that like with the watercolors from oh the right beginning? sorry i knew there was a question in there that i missed no, it's okay. um i think i just like kind of found my way by just like um uh, just like painting so much um yeah. I started out with watercolor because that was like I had used that as a kid and I knew what it was and I knew how it worked. Um, and because I didn't go to art school, all these other art supplies like were kind of just like, I don't know what to do with that. Um, but, you know, I was on Instagram. I was looking at other people's stuff. I was like watching videos. Um, I was doing like little classes on like creative bug or whatever um, and seeing all these other like mediums and so I was like well I'll just try so then I tried gouache and um I was like oh my god this it's so much brighter than watercolor and then um I got this opportunity to um paint some uh, some work for um the coven in St. Paul they were just opening it's like a it's a co-working space right co-working space okay. like geared towards like women non-binary um and like it was just a huge opportunity and I was like, okay, it's gotta be big and I, I can't do it. I need, I need to like go into acrylic. So yeah. I just like tried it and I've like never looked back. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I guess I only, I'd used acrylic just cause that was what was readily available. Yeah. Like it was just the easiest thing to find at Michael's or whatever. Yeah. And I was painting in front of my fireplace on like old broken skateboards and stuff I had. Yeah. It was just like, well, this is here. So I started using that. Right. But like, exactly. Looking at like the other different types of art that's out there for me, it's been intimidating to like want to try other things. Yeah. You know, even like with murals, I started incorporating a little bit more spray paint and stuff just because it speeds up the process sure. for certain things. Yeah. But I still get really intimidated by it because I'm like, oh, I, I figured out how to do this one thing. But right. I don't know. Like, I almost feel like if I, anyone saw my work in other, any other way that, like, they'd realize I'm a hack 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're like, yes, you absolutely. don't actually know what you're doing at yeah. all. You know, yeah. I painted a mural was like, a, is this like, can I actually do this? Is this worth doing? Absolutely, is everyone yeah. going to think this is stupid again? Like, are people going to realize that I'm yeah. not actually an artist throughout this time yeah. frame? You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm assuming it must have been really well received once you were all done. It was and it was really fun to work on it. Um, I think like during the time that I was like working on those paintings, um, uh, I think my husband was out of town. I was just home alone and I just was just like out there with my music on and just like having a moment. And um, I just, I had so much fun working on it. And I don't know why I didn't freak out about it or like that, that would be very like me to be like, oh my God, I can't do this. This is too much. But um, for whatever reason, I just like did not go to that place. And um, I had just had a great time. Were you getting a lot more commissions immediately kind of after that? I feel like a lot of times it's just one door has to open. Yeah, you know I, mean? I did definitely get um, uh, some commissions after that. And then uh, I ended up getting a commission for like another three piece um, set that I did for this family. And it was all like, I think like their birth flowers or something like that. Um, it was just like this floral that I did. Uh, and for whatever reason, when I posted about that particular commission, um, my Instagram blew up. Like, oh, sure. that just like, I don't know. That was like when I hit 10K and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this many people are like looking at my art. Um, and this was what, like 2021? I feel like it was pre, it was before I went full time. So it was like probably 2019 or 2020. Oh, it was before the pandemic. Yeah, know, before the point. pandemic. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, what kind of role did Instagram then play in creating your art? Because like, I feel like for me, some things translate really well for like social media content yeah. and some things don't necessarily. And I find like if I take a really big project as an example, now I'm only putting out one post for a long period of time because I'm working right. on this one thing versus yeah. like social media wants you to work on small stuff like all the time and be yeah. producing, producing, producing. So how did, how did Instagram affect your creative process and in general, like how did that help you or like impact your impact you creatively well i definitely like grew up as an artist on instagram because like i had started you know getting into instagram at the very beginning of my art career and so i was just sort of like using that almost a little bit as a template um but i don't know i got really into uh posting like process videos and so then I realized I could work on something, like you said, like a big project um, and still like have content that I could post, you know, more often instead of just like the one finished picture. Um, but Instagram definitely uh, like I would I would not be here doing what I'm doing right now if it wasn't for Instagram. That's just how like people got to know who I was and that I was even doing this. Uh, and um, yeah, it's just been like huge yeah me. i think it's like a un, immeasurable tool at this point yeah you know what i mean not only for like people discovering you but for setting pricing or anything else like mm -hmm. it lends as much as it not, doesn't maybe it shouldn't sometimes it like legitimizes people in a certain you yeah. know space they're like oh okay this person has this many people that pay attention to what right. they do clearly the value of it must be yeah this or all these other people like this therefore i might like that yeah you were doing etsy i'm assuming then kind of before the instagram thing took off so did your etsy really kind of take off along as the instagram did i'm assuming yes it did and um i know like that is not true for everybody like some people like instagram feels like a waste of time to them because they don't see like a correlation between like, their sales and their instagram um but that is not the case for me i um definitely as my Instagram grew, my uh, Etsy business grew. So yeah, yeah. It's Approximately been super how much of your business, like as far as your total income that you make as an artist, what percentage approximately comes from where? Some comes from commissions, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Some come from like stickers and things. Some are prints. Some's Etsy. Some's doing art shows because you do art shows. But approximately, how much comes from where? Uh, so I'm not a numbers person, <laughs> <laughs> sure. but, um, 
definitely the biggest percentage of like my income is prints and stickers because it's just so consistent yeah okay um those are available 24 7. um i just do all open edition prints so it's just those are always there and people are always buying them that means there's no number limit right you, Correct. people can just keep ordering yes. them so do yeah. you have designs on there from several years back uh yeah i mean i like go through and like get rid of stuff that i'm sick of looking at um and add new things and whatever but uh yeah i do have some some of my more popular ones that are you know from a while ago i just keep them because people really like them so um and then when i do like uh i'll release a body of work of like original paintings um every once in a while that's a decent chunk um because i just make so much all at one time right um and then i also work with a couple galleries so it's a similar similar thing to that um but obviously they take a cut so right sure um and then i'm doing a lot less shows um like maybe if like three or four a year now or i used to do like just as many as i could right uh i just they're uh hustle so yeah sure why yeah. why was it simply because of the amount of time that went into it that shifted your focus away from doing so many or how come uh the amount of time and um honestly i'm just like i'm kind of like a precious pearl like i would get so anxious about i don't even know what like what if something goes wrong or what if sure. like someone gets mad at me when i'm setting up or just <laughs> just like stupid um i would just get so anxious um and it is just so much like actual work like you have to make all of the stuff and like get everything ready and like tagged and priced and like figure out your displays then you have to like uh load your car up and drive wherever and then like drag all the shit out of your car and set it up and like it's just it's so much work um and it's really gratifying to like get to see people interact with your art i love that part um but it's just a lot of work. But you get to see people interact with your art via the internet with stickers and stuff all the time, right? Yes. That's like kind yes. of, I, I grew up, growing up a skateboarder, like stickers are such a part of the like culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? That I, when I did my taxes, not this past year, but the year before, I remember specifically realizing that I'd spent over $4,000 on stickers. <laughs> And I don't sell them. I just like give them away, <laughs> which is a problem. I yeah. just spent another like few hundred dollars the other day on another like 1500 stickers. Yeah. Um, but in like downtown Eau Claire where I live, there's my branded stickers everywhere. They're like everywhere. That's awesome. I see them all the time. I see yeah. them on people's cars all the time. And I'm like, I have no idea who's driving that car, but that's my sticker. Yeah. And like I, to me, being able to get my art to people like that has yeah. been really valuable. I haven't found myself doing hardly any like, smaller ish like i'm either painting a mural or i'm doing little digital stuff yeah it's hard for me to find time to make an actual painting because i paint really slow and like i know i'm not going to sell a painting for a thousand dollars yeah but if it takes me a week and a half like i can't afford to put my time and energy Makes into sense. that you know what yeah. i mean for you you're making these pieces of work do you then like after you make the physical piece do you make a digital version of it for prints sometimes uh it just it just depends um like i said my husband's a photographer and so he will he'll take pictures for me but um a lot of my work is like on the frame like the yeah. frame is part of the painting and so, so let's talk about that when did you come up with that idea because my, <laughs> my partner jory introduced me to your work and like what originally she showed me was like look at how she does this with these frames and i was like well that's a i've never seen anyone do that before <laughs> and honestly in the art world it is very hard to come up with something that you have not seen yet yeah you know what i mean did you see somebody else doing that that inspired you to do it what what made you think to do that um i don't really i, I had not seen it before I don't really know why I decided to do it. Um, I had some like frames sitting around my studio and I was just like looking at them one day and I was like, what if I just like put a board in there and then treated it like a canvas? And um, I had my dad like cut some plywood for me and it was like way too big and chunky and I like I don't think I ever actually did anything with that first like set of frames that I had uh, but like I came back to the idea later and uh, refined it a little bit and um, 
yeah, I don't know. It was just like, I thought it was cool. Yeah. And, uh, and then it was very well received. Um, I'm definitely not the only person doing it. Sure. But at the time that I started doing it, I wasn't aware of like anyone else doing it. So I like, it felt like fun and, you know, yeah. special to yeah. me. So, but I mean, anything that's cool, like people are going to start copying it and doing it in their own kind of way. Sure. Right. Yeah. Like there's not that much art that is like a hundred percent original from all factors. Usually it's drawn oh, yeah, from definitely. somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, what's, whatever the saying is, it's like a, a good artist. You can't tell what they pulled from, Yeah. but like their, their idea probably came from somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I don't. It's funny because I'll have people point to things that I've made and go, oh, this looks like this thing. I'm like, and then I look it up and I'm like, oh, it does. It's like, right. But I didn't like that. I didn't actually pull from that. I pulled from somewhere else. Yeah. Um, what inspired you to use such like solid colors? Because it's a pain in the ass to paint that way. That's how I paint too. Yeah. Like my, my paintings look totally different than yours. But I like for whatever re reason, the way I paint, I want all my lines to be super solid, like yeah. really crisp. Yeah. All my colors are like they would be screen printed solid. Like right. I never really mix colors. Yes. And I, I feel like most people don't paint that way. Um, I really just like it. I don't know how to explain it. Like I, I, I'm actually working more like currently and like having like a little bit of like blending and shading here and there just for like, I don't know, it's just interesting, but I just like, I love a big block of color and I love like a clean line and I would try to like leave it and I just like couldn't and I would just like go over and over and I also like to like, like I'll paint the image in the foreground and then I paint the background after so I can use the background to sort of like carve out the edges and like just leave a really clean line and I don't know, it is a pain in the ass. Like it yeah. takes so long and I <laughs> use so much paint and I like do so many layers but that's just, I don't know. I didn't go to art school. I just made it up as I went. So <laughs> Yeah. I remember my dad at one point saying, maybe you should take an art class. And I was like, Jesus, man. <laughs> and he was like, I feel like, like you should learn how to do shadows and you should learn how to do depth. And I was like, but I really don't want to. Like, right. That's not yeah. the look that I'm going for yeah. in this particular thing. Um, is there any specific brushes or paints or, or whatever that you use for that? Because I've definitely noticed some colors like just won't go solid. Like it doesn't seem to matter how many layers yeah. you put on some reds. They just like won't. Yeah. And then I'll have to put some white or something in it to try sure. to like make it work. Yeah. But are there certain brands of brushes or paints or anything that you go for? Um, I don't have any idea what brand my brushes are i am really hard on them so i try not to like get the nicest ones i just go to the store and i'm just like you know sure. picking stuff out so i can't tell you about that but um i use golden brand fluid acrylic um and then this other brand that i just discovered called pbo i think p-e-b-e-o is how okay. you say it they're from canada um the golden especially it's like so expensive but um sure. i was working when i started painting acrylic i was working at the letterpress studio and we use that for like edge coloring so i just like asked somebody like oh can you use this just for painting too and they were like yeah it's like the best or whatever so I, that's what i bought um it is like a really rich color but yeah you some colors you still have to do like so many coats um yeah and yeah i add a little white if if i need to sure so how about this you get i feel like people get into i don't want to say a rut but like you kind of figure out what your thing is and you start doing that and eventually you feel like you need to venture off and start doing other things or like progress in some kind of way, but you're good at the one thing, right? You know what I mean? So it's kind of hard to move out of that. Cause you're like, well, I know people are going to like this because this is what they've liked in yeah. the past. How are you trying to like grow with the art? Where are you moving into or what are you trying to learn? Sure. Um, I, this summer, like at the beginning of the summer, I was like, I'm going to have a very chill summer. And I did not do that. <laughs> and then um, everything kind of wrapped up like in August. And then I was like, OK, now I'm going to just like do whatever I want to do. And so I started a body of work that was just like I, I was only allowed to paint it if I was really into it and just having fun. And um, no idea was a bad idea. Uh, so I think leaning into stuff like that is just where you grow because if you are always doing the thing that you've already done it like loses interest and if you follow like what um it just feels exciting or interesting to you and 
I don't know. I think that's where you like can grow the most. Has that translated really well with your social media as well? Because you need to have some kind of consistency through yeah. that, right? Because people like you for the one thing that they saw you. I feel like especially online, people really niche themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. then when you try to move in other directions, you know that not necessarily everyone's going to continue on with that. Journey. Sure. For me on social media, I've just tried to like, I've tried to be as like much myself as possible. You know, obviously there's like some boundaries there, but um, I get like when I am following someone and they're doing the same thing over and over, it starts to feel like it's just a brand. And it's even if it's a person doing a thing, it, it starts to feel like, uh, I don't know, just less interesting. Um, and then I start looking at other people and whatever. And I just, uh, I don't know. I haven't had issues with anyone like. I mean, maybe people stop following me. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't pay that much attention. Yeah, I'm not, so. like, um, keeping that much of an eye on it. But, um, yeah, I think uh, if you, like, have a relationship with your audience where they feel like they know you, they're going to follow you, like, as you start to, like, try new things. And sure. obviously, if you veer super hard, like, it's going to be jarring for some people. Um, but, sure. yeah. So speaking about Instagram, how have you been able to find like a good balance with it? Because like right now, I'm putting way too much time into editing short form content for YouTube shorts and TikToks and Instagram or whatever, because that is what like gets the most views, which translates into being able to get paid through sponsorships and that type of a thing. But I know that for myself, it's taking a lot of joy out of it. It's not the balance that I want to have. And I feel like a lot of times in a creative realm, of course, everything is a job. There's going to be people, you know, things that you don't like, but trying to figure out a balance of where you're still enjoying what you're doing, but it's like sustainable, you know what I mean, is yeah. hard for a lot of people. Yeah, that is really tricky. Um, I think I uh, I try to spend a little bit of time every day, like even if I'm not like actually posting, I'm like figuring out what I might post in the future or just sort of like curating some content. Uh, but it definitely can take, you know, some of the joy out of it if you're just like really grinding on like the same thing over and over. Um, like I said, I try to just like have it be more of a relationship where I'm like, I'm connecting with people um, and trying to be myself instead of just always like selling. Uh, I mean, I do a lot of selling too. I, right. I definitely feel like I'm like spamming people, but um, I feel like that like helps because then I'm like, I get to be there and I get to like talk to people that I just, I couldn't otherwise. Um, but I do think you have to like kind of like limit your time so right. that you actually get to spend time like doing the thing that you're there to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And still being able to find joy from, for it or joy for that thing. And a lot of times you have to pull yourself out of that which you're building a place up in the middle of nowhere, right? What, yes. to get away from art in the whole <laughs> world? Tell me about that a little bit, because it's been fun watching, like talking about like relationships through the yeah. internet. I have enjoyed watching that on your Instagram ever yeah. since. I'm like, I look forward to this just as much as the art. <laughs> yeah, we're building an A-frame cabin in Ojibwa, Wisconsin. Uh, I, I don't have like... I mean, I kind of have a signal there on my phone. Like I can get a text and send a text. Um, I'll get notifications from Instagram, but if I try to open it, my phone is just like, no. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> You're in the woods, stop. Um, so that's awesome yeah. to be able to just like disconnect that fully. Um, I We're still building the cabin. It's very much like in process. Uh, the outside is kind of like there, but there's like, it's just a big shell inside. Um, but I do hope to like go spend like a week up there and like bring my art and work on stuff up there. I think that would be super fun in a healthy way. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Having the boundary, but you, you guys are building it yourselves, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, we are. Did, do you have any experience in building a house? No, <laughs> no. Like what made you um, want to even try to tackle a project? like My that? husband TC is uh, very adventurous. And uh, he has a lot of confidence. He's also very handy. Uh, he worked construction for a, a time, but um, yeah, just, and I don't know, we just were like, 
should we try this? And then we kind of started and um, my parents are helping. My dad's also super handy. Um, and TC has a bunch of friends who know at what they're doing like for real. So yeah, um, yeah just a, a lot of help, but he really has, you know, it's kind of his baby. He's, sure. he's very confident. <laughs> well, I feel like though, when you work for yourself, you do build a confidence of like, well, I can kind of do right. whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? Because you get in so many positions where you don't have anybody to turn to. You just right. kind of have to learn how to problem yeah. solve. And I feel like people build things up in their mind to not be attainable. So you get to a point where you're like, oh, I can kind of do anything. But I think you also then have times where you are overconfident going into something and it's like more challenging than you thought it was going to be. What was the last time something that you went into something maybe too confident? Well, I don't know if I have like a solid like example, but I like any new like craft or medium or whatever that I think I would like to try. I just think, I don't know why I can't get over this, but like, I'm like, oh, I want to try this, whatever, uh, like clay, maybe I've had some bad experiences with clay. Uh, I want to try working with clay and in my brain, I'm just like, I can already like like read the reviews, everybody loves it. And I've been amazing. And like, I'm yeah. just gonna be so good right off the bat. Sure. And uh, it's just like, everything is hard at first. You're not, not good at stuff at first. And I really don't like not being good at stuff. So um, yeah, I, I go in with a lot of confidence to any new craft. And then um, I did a clay class with a friend of mine and we were just making like little spoon rests, like easy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and she's like not she's not an artist she just like whipped out this cute little thing and i was like oh my god mine has to be really cool because like i'm an artist and sure. i like killed my sale so hard it was the ugliest thing i've ever seen sure yeah because so. you put that pressure on yourself yeah that you have to be able to do something to a certain level like yeah. i said i think that's been a bit of a challenge of you, especially I feel like the older we get, the harder it is for us to just be trash at something. Right. Because you're like, well, by by this age, I should be good at right. whatever thing. Literally I'm doing. everything. Yeah, which is like <laughs> totally not possible. You know yeah. what I mean? So then when you go into some, but I think a big part for me, like when I started painting was because I was going through divorce and I was super depressed. And it was the first time in my life where I just like didn't actually care what people thought. Yeah. Like I always have been a people pleaser. That's always been a thing for me. But I was just at a low point in my life where I was like, I don't, I really don't care if people don't like this because I, yeah. I don't care about anything for that matter. And that's when I started like painting stuff. And it then progressed and it got to a point where people, I was like giving these like little monsters that I painted to people. And then it eventually got to a point where people were like, oh, like I want one. And I'm like, oh, I don't have any. They're like, how much? You know what I mean? And yeah. like, so it slowly developed over time. But that was the hard part. And then as that progressed, I really got in a rut of like, well, but this is all I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if anyone asked me to paint something else, I was like, I can't do that. Right. Because like, I, I don't know how to do that. And yeah. so I've been slowly pushing myself to try to do more things. Yeah. Like I painted, um, like I'm working on right now is this big graphic from the skateboard company in my friend James, he owns a place called The Sticker Spot. And he makes like big vinyl wraps for cars okay. and stuff and, and whatever. And he has a huge art collection. And so I'm painting this graphic from the skateboard company on his wall. So it's not my art. Yeah. And it's all like fine line stuff. Oh, But yeah. like not like what I do fine line, like totally yeah. different. And so trying to like repl replicate that and push, push myself into a position to try something that I think I'm not going to be good at. Yeah. But what I find is like my, the skills that I have in what I do that I think I'm good at end up kind of translating anyways. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I'm like not that bad at doing this. Like I'm this is actually this. yeah. I was like, this is turning out better than I would have expected. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What resources now, like people who are trying to I mean, for one, I think when people want to get into art, you just need to make some art and yeah. accept that it's bad. And the the thing I like to tell people is you can just throw it away. Yeah. Like nobody has to see yeah. it. It can be horrible and you don't have to tell anybody. Yeah. Like you could do it when your partner's at work and they don't even have to see it. Like literally nobody has to see the thing that you make. You can just right. make it and throw it away if it's bad. But realistically, it's probably not going to be that bad. You just have to start doing it. But if somebody wants to get more into art, what are some of the resources um, and how do people find like a community as well? Because I feel like having support in that is, yeah. is huge. But a lot of people are too intimidated to like go to their first little artist market or whatever. Sure. You know? Yeah. But I mean, when they go, I feel like they feel included. But yeah. still, a lot of people, that's what holds them back. Yeah. Um, well, I found my community on Instagram. 
And I think part of that is like not just like reaching out to people and talking to people. And then if you find someone who's like in your area, like see if they'll like have a coffee, like offer to buy them a coffee to like ask some questions about how they're doing, what they're doing. Like I've done, I I did that when I was starting out and then I've like gotten coffee with people who wanted to like do what I'm doing. Like I've done it both ways. And I think that's a great, like um, a great way to go. Um, I think going to uh, art events, meeting people, like go to if you're too shy or scared or whatever to like be part of a market just go to the market and talk to people and then you'll realize that everyone is just like figuring it out as they go they're making it up nobody knows what they're doing like it's just that's just how it is it's very like once you start meeting people i feel like it's just so refreshing and you're like oh i can do this because literally there isn't a like rule book it's just you just do what you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was listening to this rapper, Cal Scru- Cal Scrubby or Scooby. I don't know how he pronounces it. But anyways, he has like a line in one of his songs where he said that he used to think all the great people knew everything. Yeah. And then he realized nobody knows anything. And yeah. the people who are great are great because they just kept doing the thing. They didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. And eventually it kind of worked itself out. But nobody really knows what they're doing with anything. And even like things like Instagram at this point, right? Like you built this audience, you built this career, but it's changing all the time. Yeah. And there's so many people that like build their careers up on social media. And then all of a sudden it's just not working anymore. And they don't right. know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Because it's changed. You know it changes I mean? constantly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's always changing. Um, I asked you this or told you to think about this before a couple minutes ago. I don't know if anything came up, but when you do something that you're passionate about for a living, you get to have really unique experiences Mm -hmm. and they're what make all the hard work worth it. Even if you're not making any money, hopefully you're also making money, but still (laughs) that's the real reason why you do it. Did you think of an experience you could share with us? Um, one, the thing that like came to my mind was, um, just like connecting with people on Instagram. Um, I like, put myself out there, which was really scary. And then I started like meeting people and talking to people. And one of those people is like one of my best friends today. And I would not have met her if I hadn't been like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to like put it out there and let people see it. Um, and she had like at the very beginning reached out to me and like wanted one of the, when I, back when I was still making tote bags, she wanted a tote bag and she was like, but I'm in town. So like and I sell vintage and like let's like do a swap or whatever and yeah. like if I hadn't um and she's like a huge part of my life now and that would not never have happened if I hadn't yeah I think being yourself on the internet there's one like one helpful tip that I found for myself that maybe it's just me that deals with this more because I like talk at length on opinionated things on the internet. So sure. I have people that don't like me because they don't like my opinion on whatever, which is sure. fine. Yeah. Um, but one thing that like helped me was figuring out that people, everybody else on the internet, other than bots, are real people, yeah. right? And they are also on the internet because they're trying to connect with other real people. Mm-hmm. And the only way you're going to attract those people is by being yourself, regardless of if people are gonna like it or not. Yeah. And you can just block people you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that has been so helpful for me when I'm like, I don't like this person or I don't want this person to see this thing because I feel judged. I'll just like, yeah, block them. I, love the, I, love <laughs> and I can block. curate the space a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like a little yeah. bit safer for me. Um, I think I had seen on your social media that you're saying something about maybe doing classes or maybe doing other things in the future. So yeah. what's what's going to happen? I know that you're working towards a couple of shows, but you said you're not trying to do too many. Obviously, yeah. there's going to be more prints and more things that are coming up. Yeah. Um, but what things are you working towards right now that people are going to see? So um, sorry, when I said I'm not trying to do shows, I meant like um, art markets, like pop up in person oh, sure. type of deal where you have to like drag your tent out. Yeah. I'm still doing uh, shows like with galleries and I will do like releases on my own uh, website. Um, so I'm working on a couple of those right now. And uh, I have this idea that I want to do classes and I keep I like all summer I was like this fall this fall I'm doing this this fall and I like it's fall now so um I don't know (laughs) (laughs) but I think it would be really fun to like now that I have a studio space like bring people um into it and have like connect with people in a way that I haven't gotten to um around this art 
So. Has it just been like an intimidation factor of like being the person everyone's looking at that you're teaching and you don't feel like you should be a teacher or what has held That's you back? That's definitely part of it. I mean, I was in my, my home before and I didn't really have like a space that I could, I wasn't going to like have people come right. to my house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people have talked to me about doing classes before and I've even had friends be like, you can use my studio and teach a class. And um, it is kind of scary. And also I like, you know, the imposter syndrome, like we were talking about, I, I don't know. I just made it all up. Like I'm fully self-taught. And so I'm sure. a little bit like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, just right. do it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be my class. Just do it. <laughs> sure. But I mean, if people come to your class, it's because they want to learn exactly what you're doing. Right. So you don't have to like move out your ballpark. You can just yeah. say, well, this is how I do this thing, yes. whether it's right yeah. or it's not. That's realistically, yeah. they're there because they want to see you do that thing yeah. or learn how to do that thing, which yeah. a lot of that stuff, like they're not going to be able to do it perfect. But honestly, that's like watching your process videos online. People can also do that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you can learn so much online from just trying whatever mm -hmm. the thing is. And like one of the beautiful parts of like, I like how on your Instagram it says like, I love DMs of like, you can just ask a question. Yeah. Like if you're stuck on something, you can just reach out to yeah. any of these people. A lot of people on the internet, even who have like large followings or whatever, if it's a genuine, genuine question of related to what they do, I found that a lot of people actually do respond yeah. and love getting questions like yeah. that because like those are the conversations they like to have. And yeah. a lot of artists, I feel like, at least for myself, get kind of lonely because you work alone all the time. Absolutely. So yeah. when you get to talk to somebody, even if it's just through social media, if it's about something real that you care about, like yeah. it's kind of nice to take a quick break from whatever you're doing to talk to whoever yeah. that person is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I always tell people like, I will talk about art at any time. Like yeah. I love it. Like we can get coffee. We can just like email, like whatever. I just, I don't know. It's really fun to connect a, like, a, you know, on that topic with, yeah with other people so yeah yeah absolutely so if people want to support you moving forward buying art obviously is nice i yeah. like to tell people dollars are not the only way to support people that's right Right? there's so many ways just sharing people's stuff on mm -hmm. social media is huge because you get like to pay for a boost is expensive however right. if somebody shares it to their instagram story now however many people just got an advertisement showcasing work which right. one of those people may become now a huge, like a, a core art buyer of yours you yeah. know what i mean so any of that stuff helps but in general shout out like where are the social medias um and where can people buy your work and then i know I, no one likes to talk about dollar amounts but realistically what are the kind of price points people can expect if they want to buy whether it's a sticker or like a print sure. like all that type of thing uh, my Instagram is at Becca Worley Co. And Which Becca Worley is spelled because you spell oh, Becca yes. differently. <laughs> B-E-K-A-H-W-O-R-L-E-Y. -E -E okay, perfect. C-O. Cool. And that's, is that an artist name or your actual name? Becca Worley is my name, my real okay. name. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a weird spelling. Um, and then as far as like, oh, and my website is just like BeccaWorleyCo.com. Yeah. Easy. Um, and... Uh, stickers and prints are always available 24 seven. Um, stickers are mostly around like five bucks. Um, and then prints are between like, uh, 35 up to a hundred, depending on the, the size I offer a range of sizes and original paintings. I release in batches, uh, when I have enough to release and they usually sell out. So I don't have like paintings just floating around on my, uh, on my site um and those it really depends it's a it's a very wide range um but they usually start um maybe like around 500 sometimes i do like if i'm trying to do a more accessible drop i'll like i'll, I'll do some smaller pieces that are less than that but um yeah that's kind of the starting point in general sure yeah i love the little fishes that you did yeah. You oh, yeah. If I do work on paper, sorry, sure. that's different. Um, those are like, you know, yeah, 35 to 75, depending how big. Sure. But I like that you're being intentional about pro like giving art or like not giving, but I mean, providing available art for people, because I think uh, I think a lot of artists hold themselves back in that way of like they realize they can't make enough money from their art because no yeah. one's willing to pay 
five hundred dollars yeah. for a painting because it's hard. Like even if you, regardless of who you are, it's hard to sell a five hundred dollar painting. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because most people don't have that much expendable income to put yeah. on their walls. So you have to be able to provide things that are available yeah. for anybody, and that's why like markets and stuff do so well because right. people have all these little postcards and all these right. little you know what price I mean? pyramid, baby. <laughs> yeah, for real though. I have one more question that this one has been coming up for me lately. Like I went to this music festival and I asked this one because I'm I'm genuinely really curious. I get to interview tons of people all over the place. Now yeah. I've been sticking more in the Midwest, but I've gotten to a point where now I get to interview people I personally want to interview. Like at first it was just whoever I was connected to in some way. Now yeah. I just like DM people that I'm like, oh, I really like this person. I want to interview yeah. them. If you could interview any one person in the world. Oh boy. For an hour, you could ask them any question you want. Who are you, who would you pick? Hmm. Doesn't necessarily have to be an artist. I guess it would be really cool to, and probably this is not like inaccessible to me, but to talk to Martha Rich because she was like one of the first people to like really inspire me to like do what I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, and I only like, I, I've never interacted with her. Like we're both on Instagram or whatever. I could reach out, but I, I never have. Cause Why like, not? Um, I don't know. Cause she's the real deal and I'm. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that would be cool to talk to. I'm sure I could come up with a better answer if um, I thought about it longer um, or more answers, but yeah. If people were going to go check out three more artists that you're a fan of, just so that way they can expand their Instagram inspirations, who are three other artists they could check out? Okay. This guy is from South Korea. Uh, Yang Mok, I think is how you say his name. It's H-Y-A-N-G-M-O-K. Uh, he's a painter and I'm like obsessed with his work. Okay, the next one um, is Jess Ackerman. Um, they're out of Portland. Uh, their Instagram is Sleepy Jess. Oh, cool. Just like it sounds. Uh, their work is so cool. And I'm gonna find her Instagram name. But another person I really like is um, She's actually out of the same, she works with the same gallery that I do in Des Moines, the Liz Legit Gallery. Um, her name's AK Hardman, and I'm gonna find her. Um, yeah, it's just AK Hardman Art. It's like very mixed media. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for inviting us into your studio. This is really cool to see your space and see all of your pa original paintings in person. I'm glad I got to share this story with you. Um, yeah, I guess it's time for us to go. Do you have any parting words? Um, I don't, but this has been really fun. Thanks for having me, and yeah, this has been awesome. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon. <laughs>